What is the energy that is being transferred to this glider? What is the work that is being done on this pendulum? Hello. In this video, we will show how the dot product is essential to our understanding of the conservation of energy. As part of this, we will do the physics demonstrations that you just saw. The dot product of two vectors is the product of the magnitudes and the cosine of the angle between the vectors. The dot product has many applications. Here we consider mechanical examples and what is probably the single most important fact in all of physics, energy is conserved. By energy conservation, we mean that the total energy of an isolated system is constant. Energy can transform from one type to another, but the total energy must remain constant. Furthermore, if a system is not isolated, the change in energy is exactly equal to the energy added to or taken from the system. In mechanics, the energy is the sum of the kinetic and potential energies. Kinetic energy is the energy of motion. A mass m with velocity v has kinetic energy 1 half mv squared. Potential energy can be considered as stored energy due to changes in the configuration of the system. This energy exists in many forms. Gravitational potential energy is mgy, where g is the acceleration due to gravity and y is the vertical position. A military example of energy conservation is that the kinetic energy of a bullet or artillery shell cannot exceed the released chemical energy of the explosive. The energy of a mechanical system changes if work is done on the system. The change in energy equals the work, which is a form of energy. This is where the dot product enters the picture. The work done by a constant force for a straight line displacement is the dot product of the force and the displacement. Why is the work defined in this way? The answer is that only this definition leads to our expression of energy conservation. We are now ready for the demonstrations. This is an air track with a glider. Pressurized air escapes from small holes in the hollow metal track here causing the glider to float on a cushion of air. The result is very little friction, as you can see. On a level track like this one, the glider moves at nearly constant velocity. Starting from the glider at rest, I am now going to use a spring to exert a constant horizontal force along the track over some distance. You know the force is constant because the spring is stretched a constant amount. The work is the force times the distance. By energy conservation, the glider gains an equal amount of kinetic energy. Potential energy is not involved here. But what happens if I exert a vertically upward force on the glider? As long as the glider remains on the track, nothing changes. But aren't I doing work on the glider? No. The dot product is zero here because the force and displacement are perpendicular to each other. Theta is equal to 90 degrees, so the work is zero. This is also true if the glider is in motion. The velocity and thus the kinetic energy remain the same. Okay, but what if the spring is at some angle between zero and 90 degrees? The dot product tells us that the work is now f d cosine theta. Note that the dot product continuously connects these two special cases of 0 degrees and 90 degrees. Here we have a mass that is suspended from a string. This system is called a pendulum. I am now using a spring to slowly exert a horizontal force on the mass. Note that the spring stretches more and more this tells us that more and more force is being required. The force is variable here, unlike before. There is essentially no kinetic energy, but I'm doing work on the system. So where is that energy going? It is all going into gravitational potential energy. How much work is required to raise the mass some height h? We can calculate the work, but this is not easy. Note that theta is continually changing. 
Also, we need to determine F such that the mass is always in equilibrium. Finally, we need to integrate over theta to find the total work. But we do not need to do the integral. Energy conservation immediately tells us what the result has to be. The work is identical to the gain in potential energy, which is just mgh. However, note that our use of the conservation of energy here only holds because work is defined as the dot product of force and displacement. We have seen that the dot product plays an essential role in how we express the conservation of energy. We have focused on mechanics, but the result holds for all of physics.